Well, good morning and welcome to Christ Central's uh, devotional. We are on the final stretch of the book of Romans, and I'm starting us um, at the end of chapter 15. Now, as I get these uh, slides up on screen, we've actually got to do some thinking this morning. I know it's not great to rise early and then be asked to do some thinking but we do. Here's a start of our passage, and we're reading to the end of chapter 15 from verse 22. And where I've started kind of looks backwards, actually. This is why I've often been hindered from coming to you. So Paul has wrote, written this long letter, and it is a long letter to the church in Rome. And there's a trouble within it, the church in Rome, between Jewish believers who are messianic and imagine that actually Gentile believers really ought to be more like them, ought to be Jews, or at least more Jewish than they appear to be. And Paul has been right the way through this using the gospel to demonstrate that it was always God's intention to have the Gentiles come in to his people in a way that wasn't to make them Jewish. Anyway, the reason why Paul says that he has often been hindered from coming to Rome is that actually his mission to the Gentiles is a thing which has really occupied his time and therefore reduced the amount of uh, time he's had to do things which he might like to do, but haven't been directly in God's call or will for his life. So verse 22 looks a little bit backwards, but let's carry on from here. But now there is no more place for me to work in these regions, meaning that the places which he felt called to, not that he's reached the rest of the world, but he has done the things which he felt he really needed to do for a certain phase of his ministry. So now there is no more place for me to work in these regions and, regions, and since I've been longing for many years to visit you, I plan to do so when I go to Spain. Now, this is the first time we've heard of this. I hope to see you while passing through and to have you assist me on my journey there after I've enjoyed your company for a while. Now, however, I'm on my way to Jerusalem in the service of the Lord's people there. Why Spain? Did he fancy a little break, a holiday on the Med? Well, no, he's lived his entire life on the Mediterranean or at least around the fringes of it. Um, no, Spain was the end, the opposite end of the Mediterranean. It was kind of seen as the, the last territory, potentially the edge of the world from a person living in that area. When you get to out of the Mediterranean uh, and get onto the, uh, the Atlantic, the Atlantic would appear to be an uncrossable sea. Um, so Spain is a marker for the ends of the earth, pretty much. Um, so that's why he wants to go there. He sees that as if he can get to Spain, then he's reached the edge. So we think that's why he's mentioning Spain. But he's got a job to do first. So here's the, uh, here's the thing which he has in mind. You can see Italy and Rome on the right, and then Spain on the left. Um, there is no evidence that Paul actually got to Spain. It's possible he did. There is some church uh, father's speculation that he did. There's even a sort of, these are the sorts of places where he might have gone if he had. But there's nothing firmer than that. Certainly nothing that we can put hand on heart and say he did get to Spain. We just don't know that. For Macedonia and Achaia were pleased to make a contribution for the poor among the Lord's people in Jerusalem. Now, Paul has been on a journey collecting money to take with him to Jerusalem because there have been problems in Jerusalem and Paul wants to take a gift. You see that in a number of the letters which he writes at around this time. They were pleased to do it. These are the believers of Macedonia and Achaia. And indeed, they owe it to them. For if the Gentiles have shared the Jews' spiritual blessings, which has been a large part of what Paul has said in this letter, 
they owe it, the Gentiles, they owe it to the Jews to share with them their material blessings. So here's Paul's justification for taking a gift from largely Gentile churches and taking it to Jerusalem to give it to largely Jewish believers. So after I've completed this task and have made sure that they have received this contribution, I will go to Spain and visit you on the way. I know that when I come to you, I will come in the full measure of the blessing of Christ. This is a really interesting um, section of the letter, and it becomes more interesting with the next phase in a moment. Um, so this is the journey that he's on at the moment that he's writing the letter. So he had finished a long teaching session in Corinth. Achaia is that lower part of Greece. Um, and this is the third, often known as the third missionary journey of Paul, or at least the return leg of it. And he's going back collecting money to take to Jerusalem. And this is the one where he says that the farewell to the Ephesian elders, he meets the prophet Agabus and Agabus says, hey, if you go there, and then Agabus sort of ties himself up in a belt and things like this, he said, this is going to happen to you. And uh, Paul says, yes, the Holy Spirit's warned me. Wherever I go, he's warned me that this sort of thing's going to happen. And so, but he's doing it anyway, because this is the call of God on him. So the Holy Spirit has been warning him via different routes and he's saying but i know this is the call i have i i, I want to go to spain afterwards but i know this is the call i have so here's the hardest part of this passage for today here's the most thinking that we need to do i urge you brothers and sisters by our lord jesus christ and by the love of the spirit to join me in my struggle by praying to god for me he's got something with struggle and heading towards Jerusalem. He's being warned, he's being faithful, but it's still a struggle. Pray that I may be kept safe from the unbelievers in Judea, and that the contribution I take to Jerusalem may be favorably received by the Lord's people there, so that I may come to you with joy by God's will, and in your company be refreshed. The God of peace be with you all. Amen. Okay, let's unpack this a little. Because here is the struggle. Paul talks about a struggle. He asks that they might pray for him in his struggle. Pray that I may be kept safe from the unbelievers in Judea. Well, if we read towards the end of Acts, you see it is the unbelievers in Judea who attempt to assassinate Paul on several different occasions and come pretty close. In fact, if the Roman centurion hadn't pulled Paul out of a scrum in the temple, he would have been pulped and killed. So Paul gets rescued by Roman soldiers, which is obviously part of God's plan, but lets you have an idea that he knew it wasn't safe. So these are Jews who have rejected the gospel, rejected that Jesus is the Messiah, and actually are grinding an axe to make it ready for Paul. They don't necessarily know that he's coming, but when he does come and they find out, they want him dead. And there's actually a group of them who say, we will not eat until we have killed him. They go on a sort of like a, a, a hunger strike fast with a, with a view to killing him. So you kind of wonder how many of those actually died because Paul didn't get killed by them. But anyway, side, of, side thing. Um, but here's this other thing, which is also part of Paul's struggle. And that the contribution I take, the money he's been collecting, that's going to help the church in Jerusalem, the contribution that I take to Jerusalem will be favorably received by the Lord's people there. Just reflect on that a moment. He's concerned that it's possible that what he's doing may not be favorably received by the Lord's people there. Well, he's just bringing them money and they need it. So what's going underneath? What's going on behind this? Well, when, if you and follow this through the, the latter chapter of Acts, you see that when he brings the money there, he's met with the delegation, which does, which does receive him, which does approve him, but says, well, actually, you need to pay for 
for people's um, particular religious rights and people will then see that you um, you're not doing the things which they accuse you of the weird thing is that Paul very clearly is doing the things which they accuse him of so there is still a tension here's Paul writing this long letter to the church in Rome about the need for unity between Jewish believers and Gentile believers but there's still an issue with what Paul is doing even in the church in Jerusalem. We know that earlier in that time, there was that sort of uh, summit with Peter and Paul. And Peter says, well, I'll go to the Jews, you go to the Gentiles. But it seems there is still unfinished business. There's still a struggle. There's still danger for Paul. Paul's hoping by the grace of God that he might come with joy by God's will and in your company be refreshed. And the truth is he does make it back to Rome. But he makes it there as a prisoner, and it seems to be that that's where his journey stops. He doesn't, as far as we know, get to Spain. He wants to. He travels through difficult times, looking for joy, and looking to be led by the peace of God looking to be faithful, not actually finally knowing where the stopping points will lead him or that necessarily where he will end up. Now, I don't know about you and your view of the Apostle Paul, but there were times when he was very definitely between a rock and a hard place. And he walked through it with faith, not with certainty that everything would work out nicely for him, but with certainty that God was good, that God was faithful, and that was enough. And that's our thought for today.